So you just joined the deck gang and now you're looking for what accessories to consider. Well, I made an accessories guide back before launch and much of my advice in that video still holds, but I think the most impressive thing that's happened since then is that plenty of companies and people have been making a lot of Steam Deck specific accessories. Today, I wanna to talk about the Steam Deck accessories that I use the most. A couple of the initial ones are obvious, but still worth mentioning. But as we get deeper, I'm gonna give you some recommendations that you may not have considered. So let's start with the most obvious of all. Look, a micro SD card is arguably the only accessory you need. I have five of them at this point, but you probably only need one good one. Here's how I recommend deciding on which card to buy. I personally don't put a priority on very large SD cards. As you can see, I'm perfectly okay with hot swapping and I always carry around all my SD cards with my Steam Deck. With a credit card size holder like this one, it's easy to store my cards with my Steam Deck in the Steam Deck case. Given that, I like to look at dollar per gig at the speed I prefer. If you'd rather only have one card, then you might want to get a 512 gigabyte or one terabyte, but the dollar per gig value is not as good on those. In any case, that's your first decision point. Am I willing to carry around multiple cards or do I just want one all the time? If the former, consider the dollar per gig value, but otherwise just go for whatever size you think you need. The second decision point is speed. Again, my decision is a bit informed by being someone that makes content. I wanna be able to download and load games as quickly as possible. So some cards are virtually unusable for me. There are two things I like to look at when it comes to speed. The first and most important is the UHS speed class denoted by the U looking symbol with either a one or three inside. At three times the speed, the U3 is incredibly faster than the U1, and I don't use my U1 card for anything but emulation. Once you're in U3, you'll see A1 and A2 as another way to differentiate speed. I'll be honest, I totally understand that A2 is intended for random reads and writes and that that should theoretically make it better than A1 for video games. But even six months later, I've yet to see any real life tests that show such a benefit on the Steam Deck. I mean, I would love to see something like God of War loads this many milliseconds faster on a U3 A2 versus a U3 A1, but I haven't. And I myself haven't been able to notice any difference either anecdotally or in the tests that I've run. So I think you're fine buying either A1 or A2. The price difference between the two has gotten a lot smaller and manufacturers seem to be phasing out A1. So in a way, I'd say that this one's a wash. In conclusion, start by considering storage, then move on to speed. I favor speed and I'm willing to buy smaller cards to compensate since I don't mind hot swapping. Within these constraints, you should be able to find a card that suits your needs for under $50 or maybe even under $30 during a good sale. Next, let's discuss power banks. Ever since 2020, I'm even more of a homebody than I was in the past. I don't get a chance to travel a ton and I don't have a commute. Still, contrary to my own expectations, I've gotten a lot of use out of a power bank. Sometimes I'm not sitting near an outlet or I'm already comfortable in bed and don't want to get up. That's where this guy comes in handy. So this segment is sponsored by Basis. They make a bunch of electronic accessories, but I've known them for their power banks. And once I tried this one out, I really wanted to partner with them because that's how much I've been enjoying this product. This is a 74 watt hour battery compared to the Steam Deck's 40 watt hour battery. Take this with you wherever you go and you extend your Steam Deck battery life by an additional 150%. Just to give you some real life numbers from recent usage, I started charging my Steam Deck when it was down to 29% and it charged up to 70% in 49 minutes with 68% left on the power bank itself. This was all while the Steam Deck was in sleep mode. Of course, if you are going to travel by plane or train, this is a great battery for that too. I believe you're allowed to carry up to two of these when you travel by plane, so that's pretty great. Now, I wouldn't call this power bank light. It weighs about a pound with the Steam Deck itself coming in at just under one and a half pounds. You can of course rest the power bank nearby or you can use something like the Deckmate to carry the battery with the Steam Deck, but again, just be aware that it is not particularly light. Also, be sure to subscribe for my full review of the Deckmate coming soon. As for the features for this particular battery bank, there's one USB-C port, one micro USB port, and two USB-A. It also has this LED that I love. It tells you the battery life left on the power bank and whether the power bank is receiving or giving power. Finally, there's this power button on the side. You can even press that button to toggle between different views. This is a really excellent power bank, genuinely the best that I've used so far. And like with everything else in this video, there's a link in the description if you want to pick this one up. Thanks again to Basis for sponsoring this video. Oh, and one last note here, this comes with its own charging cable, but I bought a separate adapter and cable that I use to charge both this and the Steam Deck, so let's get into that too. 
Okay, so a lot of this next segment is a little unnecessary. You don't need any of this stuff and it's kind of a luxury, but it really stepped up my quality of life. Again, please keep in mind that the Steam Deck is not just my primary gaming device, it's virtually the only device I use at this point. So that colors a lot of my own opinions. In any case, here's what I got. I have this 65 watt charger from Anker and a six foot Amazon Basics charging cable. I like having a separate cable so that I can use it with either the power bank or the charger or something else. I have these little adapters, one USB-A to USB-C, which is helpful for thumb drives, one L-shaped connector from JSOX, which is nice so that the power cable doesn't just stick out of the top. And as an aside, I also have an iPhone, so I bought this teeny little USB-C to lightning adapter so that I can basically use one charging setup for all my main electronics. One more thing I ordered but haven't tried out yet are these magnetic USB-C adapters. I think they'll be helpful if you want a quick way to detach or attach your cable, or if you just worry about a tripping hazard. By the way, you have to be careful and make sure to note that some of these adapters will only provide power and won't be able to transfer data. So be sure to pick up the kind that you want. I'll include links to both in the description, but again, I haven't actually tried these yet. I'll update with a YouTube short once I have. All right, next let's talk about docks. Look, when I say I've tried them all, I mean it. I have five different docks or hubs here and I wanna give you a quick overview of what to look for. I have two Anker docks, two JSOX, and one called iVolar. As a disclaimer, JSOX have sponsored this channel in the past, but this video is not a part of that partnership. Right off the bat, the two JSOX and the iVolar are specifically designed around the Steam Deck. They have a place to sit the Steam Deck in and they have an L-shaped connector. They're basically meant to look a lot like the renders of the upcoming official Steam Deck docking station. The JSOX stocks have an aluminum body and feel more premium. The iVolar one feels a little cheap and hollow in comparison. The specs are almost identical. The iVolar has three USB-A ports, one HDMI, and a USB-C for power. The basic docking station from JSOX has one less USB-A port, but it also has Ethernet rated for 100 megabits per second. The upgraded JSOX dock adds another USB-A and gigabit Ethernet. Given these specs, the list price of $50 for the iVolar seems a tad high in comparison to the JSOX at $40 and $50 respectively. However, you can frequently find the iVolar on sale for around $35. By the way, these three are all rated for 4K60 and that advertised bandwidth will work for most displays but I do have one TCL TV where 4K60 is not working for either of these three docks. Okay, and now the Anker docks. I basically just have one 4K30 and one 4K60. They're both HDMI and the 4K60 one has gigabit ethernet. These are obviously not designed for the Steam Deck and it feels like you're paying a bit of a premium for the name, perhaps rightfully so. The 4K30 is about $35 and the 4K60 is a whopping 80 bucks. What I will say about the 4K60 is that it even works on my TCL display so that's one point in their favor. That might explain why the name brand is worth a bit of a premium as it may spell better testing and quality control overall. I actually use the Anker docks to capture Steam Deck footage at my editing desk. As for which of these to buy, I think it's highly preference based and also dependent on the best prices you can get on any given day. I find that I am much more likely to play docked when I'm using one of the docking stations designed specifically for the Steam Deck. It's more convenient and it'll look better with my decor than the Anker options. Conversely, I use the Anker docks as sort of the workhorses. They help me capture footage for this channel. They're not necessarily better at it, they're just more practical for me as something that's not on display, but instead gets stored when it's not in use. Of course, links to all the options are below in the description. So as you may have figured out by the Steam Deck I've been showing in this video, my friend Mosquito has some new skins. In the past, I've showcased his skins for Portal and Half-Life, and since then he's added designs based on Borderlands, Mass Effect, and my personal favorite, Cyberpunk. I absolutely love this Cyberpunk design. The bright yellow, the flaming samurai, the nodes, it's awesome. What's your favorite skin? And what else would you like to see Mosquito create? So yeah, he's doing all of these by himself and selling them on his Etsy shop. They're $25 a piece with free shipping and I consider that to be a major bargain. If I had any complaint, it'd be that the texture of these are somewhat slippery. It never actually feels like the Steam Deck is gonna slip. It's just more of a preference thing. I like the matte texture of the Steam Deck itself, so it's something to keep in mind. Actually applying the Steam Deck skin may be a bit daunting, but Mosquito provides a QR code that takes you to a video tutorial on how to apply it. You will need some heat. He uses a heat gun, but I ended up using a hairdryer, 
which provided more than enough heat to do the trick. You can see it even stung my fingertips a few times. You apply this in four parts, the top strip, the back piece, the grips, and finally the front. Mosquito provides some useful tips, including using the backing paper to only expose part of the skin at a time. This helps in making sure that you get the alignment as right as possible. I've got a question for y'all though. Would you want to see a fan to deck skin for the Steam Deck? Should Mosquito and I work on something like this? What do you think and what would you want it to look like? Let me know in the comments. Okay, and the next big accessory I have for you is this TomTok bag that you've seen throughout this video. The Steam Deck is the rare handheld that doesn't need an additional case or bag. It already comes with a very nice case that can carry the default power adapter, as well as some SD cards depending on how you store them. But I've been living with this TomTok bag for a few weeks now, and it's going to be hard to go back to the default case. First of all, these materials feel durable and premium, starting with the YKK zippers. And perhaps that's why this comes with a 12 month extended warranty. On the outside, you have a flat pocket. I use this to store smaller accessories, my SD cards, a small USB cable, and those little USB-C adapters. On the inside is a flat mesh pocket that you can use similarly. And then there's this one big main compartment with a soft separator for the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is cushioned on both sides and the separator has these sort of wings on the sides to make room for the ergonomic handles. Then on the other half of the separator, there's plenty of room for some accessories. I keep my power bank, power brick, six foot cable, earbuds, and a mouse in there. You could probably choose to keep a controller and a dock in there if you plan on doing some dock gaming, for example. The point is there's lots of room to keep your accessories and that's why I choose this one over the official Steam Deck case. Also the opening is on top so it's pretty unlikely for the Steam Deck to accidentally take a spill if I forget to zip the bag closed. This is also kind of a no brainer if you travel with the Steam Deck since you can pack some extra accessories with it and it fits nicely in a book bag or something like that. This did come with a strap if you want to carry it on your body, but I opted to leave it unstrapped and just carry it in my hands. I mostly just carry this around up and down my house. I think my wife and kids would think something was wrong with me if they saw me without this bag. Next up, I want to leave you with some thoughts on controllers. I've tested the Gully Kit King Kong Pro 2, the new 8-bit Doe controllers that now come in awesome new colors like this sick atomic purple. These are both extremely premium feeling and if you like to use either Switch or Xbox controllers, these are no brainers. They both have four different modes to switch between and can be used wired or wirelessly. The modes are for Switch, X input, Android or D input and have separate Bluetooth memory so you can pair each mode to a different system and toggle between them seamlessly. The 8-bit Doe feels excellent in my hands. It has the pros of a Super Nintendo controller, but it's completely brought up to modern standards and yeah, it's just super comfortable. The placement of buttons like the home button and screenshot button feel perfect. I've played a ton of PlayStation, so I'm used to the symmetrical analogs. I love that the 8-bit Doe has programmable paddles on the back and a user replaceable battery. The paddles have to be programmed with 8-bit Doe's proprietary software, so that can be a bit of a pain, but it does make sense. The King Kong Pro 2, on the other hand, has asymmetrical stick placement, which works for me too. It has these hole sensor sticks, so they're immune to joystick drift. It does feel a little more grippy with a soft texture that feels like it would get smudged pretty easily, but so far it's been really resistant based on my use so far. I like that it comes with the plastic shell, and that makes it much more likely for me to travel with this one. Overall, these are great options. My only complaint actually has nothing to do with these specific controllers. When it comes to the Steam Deck, both X input and Switch are a little bit limited. X input is missing gyro and Switch is missing analog trigger so you lose that functionality. DualShocks and DualSense have gyro and analog trigger so you get a lot closer to the full functionality that is available on the Steam Deck, not to mention the touchpad in the middle. Still, like I said earlier, if you like Switch or Xbox controllers, these are as good as it gets in that regard. There are a lot more accessories that I've yet to cover. Project Kill Switch is coming soon. JSOX has a new dock for sale that has a slot for an M2 drive. I've already mentioned a deckmate which allows you to strap on battery or additional storage, and I'll let you know if those magnetic couplers are worth it, but I think this is a good start for people that are new to the Steam Deck. If you're one of those people, then make sure to check out my Q3 review where I give you a quick overview on how to get started with the deck. Deck gang out. Goodbye.